Broadcasting from London, Ontario, Canada, I'm Kevin Bulmer. This is Journeys with the No Schedule Man, where we are celebrating and sharing our true selves and stories as we all look to stand out, connect, and grow in the manner that we desire and deserve, both in life and work. And today, we're going to speak with Jenna Goodhand, talking about doing all of the things. There are a lot of things that Jenna is involved in, a lot of things that she wants to do. And if this is something that resonates with you, the idea of whether you need to be a specialist, have one lane, one niche, one target, one problem that you offer, one solution for, for the rest of eternity, forever and ever, amen, or you're a little bit more like me and like Jenna, where you have multiple interests that all sort of intertwine and intermingle and just kind of light you up. I'm not saying that one is wrong and one is right, but it's interesting to hear other perspectives and when you find something that maybe resonates with you, hopefully you can find something that you can take away and connect with those people whose ideas you appreciate. And I know that you're really going to love hearing from Jenna. We're going to bring her on here in just a moment. Just quick before we do that, I want to introduce you to some people and places that I'm really grateful that have made it possible for us to produce this podcast it's brought to you in part by Mo Mondays London, the inspirational event series hosted by yours truly. We host it once a month here in London, Ontario, Canada at the London Music Club. Think TEDx meets The Tonight Show with a little bit of Muppet Show flavor tossed in. If you like this podcast, the tone of the genuine, original, sincere conversation and sharing and connecting in an effort to grow, then you will love Mo Mondays. MoMondays.com slash London is where you can find information about upcoming events, tickets, reserve tables, team building packages, awesomeness of all kinds related to Mo Mondays London. I'm going to tell you about somebody else that I really appreciate, Carol Trickett from Trickett Financial. Uh, they provide and Carol provides insurance and investments for Canadians and newcomers to Canada. I highly encourage you to reach out to Carol at trickitfinancial.com. You'll see that on the screen there. If you are watching the video, if you're listening to the audio, trickit with two T's at the end, financial.com. You can also find Carol on Facebook and on LinkedIn. Carol's doing some really terrific work, a mentorship program through Awesomepreneurs, which is an, yet another a uh, great example of an organization that's uh, supporting people both individually and professionally. And Carol and I actually met uh, through them. So have a look for her at tricketfinancial.com. We're going to talk to Brett Lucier in our next podcast episode. Brett is the owner of Provincial Glass and Mirror and really just a wonderful guy, community minded, well respected, kind, hardworking. And he's a great example of somebody that got in on the ground floor of the business that he's involved in, Provincial Glass and Mirror, and worked his way all the way up to owning the company. So that's a slightly different perspective from what we might be talking about here in the next couple of moments today, but an equally valuable perspective as you look to kind of <clears throat> evaluate, excuse me, evaluate what your next move is and uh, where you want to go, what you want to do, what kind of work you're looking to do. It might be that the best opportunity is right there under your nose, wherever you are. And so thanks sincerely to Provincial Glass and Mirror. Laura Ma from Diamond and Gold Treasures is such a terrific example of somebody who has really jumped into her passion, stretched herself beyond her comfort zone, and um, not only started a business that really resonated with, with her and who she is, but has used that experience to push herself to new things. So I highly recommend that you look at what Laura's doing, especially on social media, because she's been producing original videos, she's been showing her face and sharing her voice and creating events, and it's something that she has not felt that that's a natural thing for her to do, but she's doing it in the idea and for the mission of growing her business. And she's doing a terrific job because she's just being real. She's just being genuine and therefore being very relatable. They provide diamond and gold treasures, some of the finest jewelry in the area here in London, Ontario, Canada, also offering jewelry repair, custom design and layaway. Look for her on Facebook or at diamondsgold.com with a Z there in the middle or Z, depending on uh, what the grammatical police will throw you in jail for. And uh, just before we talk to Jenna, uh, I want to let you know about my friend Gord Fancher, who uh, his company is called Connect One Consulting. And I just believe 
so much in the power of connection. I hear a lot about uh, words like leads and prospects and consumers and databases. And that's well and fine if you're a robot, but in terms of creating relationships with actual human beings, I really think that it starts with a, a, a connection, it's just something that you feel where you feel safe, you feel valued, you feel um, by that other person and maybe interested in what they have to do. And that's something I know Gord is passionate about as well. Some ways that that might help you in your business. Maybe you're looking to expand your professional network. Maybe you want to grow your business. Maybe you're looking to find a new career. Maybe you want to be more active in your community or help others in need. These are all reasons why we might want to be better at connecting. And so a great way to, to help you and your company do that is through my friend Gord and Connect One Consulting. Dot com. It was only a couple of years ago that I connected with Jenna Goodhand, and that was uh, a really great thing for me. <laughs> you're going to see it's a good thing for you as well. Uh, if you're sitting in on this conversation, either audio or video, um, because she's just one of my favorite human beings, and she's here with us now. Jenna, I'm um, thank you for your time, by the way. Thank you um, for having me. The Hive. I was going to say the Hive London, but I guess we're going to have to open it up a little bit more broadly than that. But how would Jenna Goodhand try to describe what the Hive is or is becoming in her own words? Right. Well, what's been fun about the Hive is it's been an organic response to the community. I didn't have a business plan. Um, the name the Hive came from someone who was sitting beside me at Starbucks. So. Thank you to Chris, who just happened to be the guy beside me. I threw some words out at him. And he said, the hive sounds good. And I said, the hive it is. And uh, it really began as, um, you know, I found an old farmhouse. And I thought, what a, what a great place to bring in customers and clients and partners where you already feel at home. And so that was six years ago. And since then, we have grown we still have a tiny house, but we've grown into a bigger house and now we're growing into other areas of the city and even outside of the city. Um, but the hive for me is more than just a business. It's a way of life. And what I'm hoping to inspire others to do is uh, to build their own hives. So what that could look like could be something in a physical structure. It could be in your workplace. It could be amongst you and your friends. Um, or it could be you know, a mental way of being, which is just the idea that when you know, uh, business and individuals and develop personal development and growth all come together, the speed and the outcome at which we benefit is uncalculable. Like it's, it's really amazing. And, you know, I, I don't take credit for what it's become because it's, it's not me, you know, I, I facilitated this to come to be, but, uh, I didn't mean a pun there come to be. It's hard not to say the word be actually. <laughs> um, but it's, it's this amazing dance between, um, business and individuals. And, and in that way, they're sharing the same space and they're sharing the same outcomes. And I really believe that this could be, um, something that could be implemented into existing businesses and other community places. Yeah. Let's uh, let's back up a little bit and see if you can take us into where you were, kind of how your life looked at the time that the genesis of, of this happened, and maybe lead into the sort of discovery and the that kind of lightning bolt feeling that you had of mm -hmm. of of what has has become what you just described. But maybe let's take that one thing at a time. So first of all, what did your life kind of look like personally and professionally pre like just pre-hive? <laughs> well, I was living in an apartment by myself with my son, who was about four or five months old. We didn't have a lot of furniture. We didn't have a lot of anything. I didn't have a job. Um, I was trying to complete my master's from a country far, far away. And to be honest, I was just trying to get through <laughs> through every day as a new mother and uh, a human on this planet. <laughs> Yeah. Wait a sec, the far, far away part, would you, it was your professor like Lord Farquaad or how's that work? I did my, uh, my master's degree in Hungary. That's so cool. Sorry to interrupt you. So okay. um, single mom, educated or, or getting even further educated. Yeah. Um, the single mom thing alone is like five full-time jobs. 
Yeah. Uh, but so talk about doing all of the things. You've got a lot going on here at this point in your life. So please continue. So as, as things happen, I forgot to renew my driver's license. And, <laughs> <laughs> and that hasn't really changed now that I've, that I've got my life in a little better order. I still forget. Um, so I was driving out to renew my driver's license. And I saw the sign at the side of the road that said, for rent. And I wasn't thinking this was for me. I wasn't, I wasn't thinking anything except, hmm, that looks like permission <laughs> to drive down this random long driveway in the middle of the city. So I drove down it and when I saw this little house, I had a light, a light lightning bolt moment. And if you've had those before, it's it's it doesn't it's almost like it doesn't come from you. It like comes through you. And it was this moment where all of a sudden I just felt so connected to whatever was about to happen. <laughs> I found someone on the property to show me through this house. I don't remember anything he said because in my head, I was thinking of all the future things that would happen in this space. And I said to the man, look, I don't have any money. I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't know that's not the best way to lead. Um, it's a good sales pitch so far. Yeah. What did you say next? I said, I don't have a job. Um, but I said, I really believe that this is something special. Could you please just give me two days to figure this out? And he he kind of, I think, was excited by how bizarre I was. And, what? <laughs> and he said, I'll give you a couple days. And so, um, this, I mean... I laugh now at the, at the things that come together, but in a, in a short way, someone hired me to essentially be good karma for their company. I, I don't know how else to describe it. I didn't really have to do work. They just wanted me connected to their company. And the amount of money that they paid me was exactly the amount to cover the first month's rent on the hive. And this happened all within a, a bundle of hours. So, so I jumped in and that's kind of, that's kind of, the hive was nothing. And then all of a sudden it was my primary focus. I'd like to stay here on this lightning bolt stuff here uh, and explore it a little further if you're willing. Is that a great big, wait a second, <laughs> you bring that back. Is that a great big, yeah, yellow mug? <laughs> With I should have asked you to have your truck behind you. <laughs> yeah. Here's a diversion, but it's the <laughs> brightest yellow truck <laughs> the bright yellow I get, the hive, but and I don't want to ask you about the truck. Maybe that'll come up later. Let's stay on stay on target. It's just okay. I love it's like there's convention, what we were supposed to do, and then yeah. there then there are the lanes that Jana drives down in a big bright yellow truck, which you'll see if you go to the hive. Um lightning bolt moments. Um, if you said why you were on that property to begin with, I didn't catch it. What brought you there? Curiosity exploration uh but were you just driving down the, the I was just driving down Warcliffe Road I saw a sign at the side of the road that said you know that something on that property was for rent and I just took it as permit and actually I should say I passed the driveway I went and got my license and I was standing in the line for an hour or so as you do and I was thinking you know what that sign gave me butterflies I want to go back and see what what was it? I almost, I couldn't shake it. I saw this sign that said for rent. I couldn't see the actual properties because if you've been to the hive, the, the driveway's so long that you don't know it's there. And so I got my license. I went back and, and then that's it. So it was butterflies, butterflies or that feeling of uh, anticipation, excitement, um, curiosity, exploration, Almost, it's almost like I couldn't shake it. I had to, I had to, either I was meant to go, you know, be murdered <laughs> or I was meant to find my destiny. I don't know. Something in me stirred emotions and I, I thought they were good emotions, so I followed them. <laughs> so to give people an idea, and you had had your license renewed um, at, at the little place in Lambeth? Yes. So you were coming back Warncliffe Road from Lambeth to, to London. I'll try to describe this as best yeah. I can for people that aren't in this area, but this road it joined Lambeth is like a little community just on the outskirts of, of the, the city of London. And there's a little bit of sort of agricultural space, but Warncliffe Road joins back up to where there are some car dealerships. There's the big box furniture stores sort of right there. Mm -hmm. And just on the edge of that development on the Lambeth side is where uh, what we now know as the hive is. And like you said, it's 
it, it, it's like you're in the city and then you make a left turn and you go down that that country lane that you described and wham, you're in the country, <laughs> like yeah. right there. Um, so that in itself is is kind of an interesting, I think, sort of field of dreams like discovery. But mm -hmm. in terms of the lightning bolt, and I'm asking you to unpack this a little bit, Jenna, because I'm hoping that you sharing this will help people who are watching and listening tune into themselves and go, wow, so I'm not the only one who's felt that way where all of a sudden I just found myself somewhere or was thinking about something seemingly without reason. When you were describing it, it almost sounds to me like a little bit of an out-of-body experience, like something just all of a sudden takes over the wheel and overrides <laughs> the system and you might have your conscious mind screaming, what the hell are you doing? Yeah. And you just keep going through the the... The, the steps anyway, is that at all close to how it felt? Absolutely. And the one thing I would say to people is that that giving into that moment for me was not the first time. And so some people think I'm, you know, I'm very risky and I jump into things. I've been giving in to these feelings for most of my life. And so it gets, you get to distinguish, is this a, light, a lightning bolt moment or something you ate <laughs> or, or just an idea? Um, but I think, you know, for me at that point in my life, I had, I had uh, tuned into that feeling and I thought, you know what, I'm going to explore this and I'm, I'm going to see where this will go. And the really interesting thing is that my actual, my earliest, so when we get people to think about what did you want to be when you grow up and what's important to you and what do you think about as a child? I didn't realize until this year, actually six years after having the hive, uh, I was writing a speech for a women in leadership conference and I was tuning into what I wanted to be because I was talking to these women about what they wanted to be. And I remember that when I was a child, I wanted to have a piece of land. And this is like seven, eight years old. I wanted to have a piece of land where I would teach people about connecting with one another and, and saving the planet and, uh, you know, exploring their own, you know, happiness and things like that. So that actually had always been in me. And so that had been in me and I hadn't really been looking for a place because why would I, given single mom, empty apartment, no job, until the place was there. And then something inside my mind that had been there forever saw this as a solution, even though I didn't realize that that's what was happening. And the other really interesting thing is when my son started going to daycare, we had to fill out this form about what does his name mean? and. I had named him Beckett, and I had <laughs> named him Beckett after Samuel Beckett, an Irish playwright. And I, but I looked up what does the word Beckett mean, and it actually means bee cottage. It means the hive. I had named my son Beckett before I had even found the hive. So I actually named my business after my son, not knowing it, which is also wild in itself. And I think that the more you're open to this, the more these synchronicities happen, the more that things start to really not seem so crazy after all, even if at the time they seem crazy, it just, it, everything's just kind of like coming together. Um, and so when you have those out of body experiences, it's really just an absolute connection to you. That's how I feel. Okay. Wait just a second. Let's back the truck up. <laughs> Is that the, the, how the name came to be like, did you find out about the, the translation or the meaning behind Beckett's name? and then explore that toward the business or find no. that out after the fact? After I had named the hive the hive, I it was probably a year into it and I was doing homework. Because at the time when I got the hive, he, was, he wouldn't have been one or anything. So once he was in daycare and we had to do homework, that's when I looked into the meaning of his name and found out his name actually means bee cottage, which is a hive. So I had actually named my, my business after my son not knowing, which is also, you know, that, pretty um, wild. <laughs> That's the kind of twilight zone stuff happens when you, you get into flow and you don't resist it. Yep. And you, you go with it, but it's, it's <laughs> butterflies. Yeah. Again, just hearing that story. I, I wonder if I can ask you to describe a little bit of the process of naming it. And here's the context behind my question, Jen, mm -hmm. is both of us uh, are connected to and love being around and, and collaborating with other people who have creative interests, creative projects, community organizations. Uh, maybe they're involved in some sort of business of their own or aspire to be. And I see a lot of people agonizing over names, logos, slogans, specialty statements, all that kind of stuff. 
And I, I feel strongly that whatever your brand is, mm -hmm. it's, it's not any of those one individual things. It's the story that's built around it. If there's no story, if there's no context, it doesn't matter what you call something. Right. I use in some of the marketing talks I do, I show the Apple logo. It's a frigging Apple with a bite out of it. I'm like, is this a food company or a pest control company? We'll take the worms out of your dog. It's a <laughs> technology company without any story. Yeah. There's nothing behind it. So I'm really curious about how you had this lightning bolt moment. You found this spot. The universe has lined up to put you in a position where you can have the finances to even just take the next step. Yeah. Not solve all your problems forever and ever, amen, but the next step. And then mm -hmm. you go about naming it and you choose as your brand, as your sign, as your, um, as your line, uh, the hive. Tell yeah. me about what went into that initially. Sure. So initially I was thinking this is going to be a place where people working on their own little things as, you know, as a commonality create more. And I really, I look to nature for all my answers to everything. Any struggle I have, I look at nature. How's nature handling this, right? How can I <laughs> care what nature is doing? And so, you know, as, as a environmentally conscious person, you know, I admire the bees. I admire their ability to create a lot of our food and uh, withstand being on the same planet as humans. Um, and so it came down to a honeycomb and the hive. And the only difference was that, you know, this person I had sat beside said, the honeycomb sounds a little bit too um, feminine. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but the hive sounded a little bit more maybe um, gender neutral or something. At the time, you know, it didn't, I was like, okay. But what's funny is it's mostly women anyways. But people said to me, you should change your name. People are gonna think you sell honey. And mm -hmm. I said, I don't, I, well, we don't. <laughs> we don't sell honey and we're called the hive. Um, but what's funny is because you and I do all the things, there's lots of times where you can try out different names. So I have thought a lot about naming things. And so now that we have this enormous house, we call the attic, the attic. We call the garage the garage, right? Like I, it's almost like let's just call it what it is. We don't need to think of a fancy name. Um, you know, I have a vision of taking over one of the red barns as a cafe. I'm just gonna call it the red barn cafe, right? Like let's not get complicated. But then I also know that calling it the hive and that being associated with bees or honey that hasn't done us a disservice at all, right? Just like Apple hasn't. People aren't gonna not buy things because of that. I think you're very right in that what a brand is has a lot more to do with the value, the feelings, the connection, the product, this, all those things. Um, and the easier the name is to remember, I think that that's really what matters. So Apple is very easy to remember. Um, it's easy to pronounce if it's in a, you know, English country. Um, so yeah, <laughs> the hive is very similar, right? And it is. And I think as soon as you have any kind of exposure to it and to you, you can start to put the pieces together. You know, the, the community, the cross pollination, the mm -hmm. just the natural uh, evolution of it. And after you've done that, it, it, it feels perfect. But I remember when I got introduced to, I had never heard of it before. And then mm -hmm. when I went through the certified coaches federation course with you as the instructor, and that was the first time I'd ever heard about it, which was like one of the softest cells ever. Hey, by the way, you know, just in case you ever heard of, don't feel obligated, but you know, there's this place and like, oh, what the heck is she talking about? Yeah. Um, and now, you know, since then we've become great friends and partners. What's it been like, like what immediately pops into your mind if I, if I ask you about, you know, some of the unexpected uh, ups and downs that you've encountered, like that you encountered right after you get started and even within the context of the, the, of the last six years and just in, in, in trying to build that into what it's, it's become and is becoming. Ups, downs, what pops right into mind? Well, the one thing I was, and I don't know why, I think I have an idea. I, I never wanted anyone to know who ran the hive. <laughs> I always wanted it to be some sort of mystery as to, wow, this place is really unique, but like who runs this? And when we had just the small house, it was like that. I, I would have people say, Jenna, you would love this place called The Hive. You should check it out. It's totally your vibe. And I'd be like, cool, that sounds amazing. And I loved that it was just its own thing. Why, <laughs> why? like you wanted to be Batman? Like what's? I don't know. I think I had a hard time taking compliments. I had a hard time 
being the face of something. Um, I just wanted it to be a gift to the community. I just wanted it to be a place where it didn't feel like there was a hierarchy of, of people. Um, but then when we got the big house, it really needed someone to step more into that leadership role because, while well, the cost was, was significantly more. Um, and it wasn't until the big house that we even began to really do some of that marketing stuff. And, and to be honest, um, we never really have kind of advertised the hive. We will advertise people that we love that are in the hive. Um, and we will promote certain events that we do. But I, when people say, oh, I've never heard of you. I can't believe I've never heard of you. I, something inside me says, oh, that's so nice. And I don't, I don't know why. I think it's the best. I want to, um, I, I, I'm going to jump in. I'm yeah. going to jump in here for a second. Um, this is kind of what it's like, by the way, if you're watching and listening when Jenna and I chat, except that I'm talking a lot less. So it's probably really enjoyable for you, Jenna. Yeah. Enjoy it while it lasts. Um, but here I still can't help but interrupt. I think this is really important to share. And I want to come back onto the trajectory of ups and downs, challenges, and maybe yeah. some unexpected triumphs. Um, but I'm wondering if, if, to what extent is stepping out front and 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 being okay with with that um, part of what you've had to work through, sort of and release and allow and and not think through in advance what you think other people's assumptions may be yeah. uh, and, and just be okay with that. Cause I asked that because that, that really resonates with me. I I'm very, as you know, comfortable on stage in front of a camera, but I don't like calling attention to myself. Yeah. And it sounds like, and that's something that I've really had to, to be mindful of trying to work through and I'm still trying to work through it. How much is uh, of, of that is true for you with, with this, do you think? So here's what I, I resonate with that so much. And I think that now having been doing this for, for this length of time, I actually think that it was smart. I didn't think about it in that way, but I know that um, because I work with so many coaches, um, I, I know, and especially through you, that relationships are everything, right? We aren't, as coaches especially, we aren't selling products we're selling ourselves and and i don't like even saying selling or we're sharing who we are in a way that allows people to say yes this person feels like a safe place for me to, to share my struggles and triumphs um but i think specifically with the hive i think the one reason i never put it really out there was because it's community and i felt like to for some reason to advertise or market it felt like i was exploiting it and the 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 purity of it, I don't, I don't know. So it was almost like I love that the people who showed up there came because it was word of mouth. The hive has grown entirely because of word of mouth, and that gives me a sense of. Um, uh, I know we talked about this word authenticity, but it's like if you're there, you're there because someone that we love and has felt loved here has brought you here to also be loved, and even if it's business right it's it, we it's it's the it's a magical experience there and i think that that's part of why i've kept that that way with my own stuff though yeah i still do feel some reservation about saying like here i am come get me like i'm here to help you like i i struggle with that but i know that long term um my success in those areas of my life have come from not doing that and that's a hard thing to hear when you're just starting out and you have to be seen and you have to be connected and so I think, you know, meet as many people as possible, let them see who you are as a friend would, right? Like, don't try to be selling, don't try to be luring, don't try to be mm. convincing. Um, you will be convincing and luring just by being yourself, right? <laughs> luring. <laughs> Jenna's going to lure you into the hive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, it, there are, um, it's so, what you just described, it sounds to me like it was just kind of a, a natural flow of what resonated with you at that time. Mm -hmm. And then when that, when that changed, like when you, you talked about when it came time to look at taking over the big house, mm -hmm. which will make sense if, if you're on site there, or if you've been there, you know what we're talking about. There are a few different buildings um, that you did kind of step out front a little bit, but I appreciate you sharing about that because this is what you described about the community and people bringing other people. That's largely how I feel about Mo Mondays London. Absolutely. I feel almost sort of irreverently detached. I get people that will say to me, well, 
who's your target customer and who are you and who is your ideal kind? I'm like, I'm not like, no, I, I'm, that's not why we're here. God bless you. But like, if you come and, and, and you'll, you feel it, you'll, if it resonates with you, you'll get it and you'll know, I won't have to describe it to, and if you don't, then it might not be for you. And that's okay. It's perfectly okay. Yeah. But, um, but I also see, um, Jenna, that I've, personally, I've hidden behind names of things. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something that I've had to work through. So I offer that just for someone that's watching or listening that might be struggling with that as well. But it doesn't really sound so much like that's it as much as really knowing the values, staying true to that. Um, you know what? When the topic of this conversation about doing all the things, I think yeah. for those people out there who feel like there's something wrong with them because I can't just pick one thing or why do I do something for a few years and then I want to change. You're likely someone who loves to live in the space of growth. And I think, you know, like the most important thing to you then becomes, am I enjoying this? Because one thing I've also learned is the more, the more all the things you do, the more you realize you can do all the things, right? And so, you know, in the beginning, you might just start maybe, um, you know, selling like skincare products as your own independent business. And then you're like, wow, I'm a business owner. And then you think of something else to do. And so I think, you know, you actually get to a point where you realize it's not about the thing I'm doing. It's about how I'm feeling doing the thing. Mm -hmm. And so some things you do, you may get to a point where you're like, I don't feel this anymore. And so I think for people like us, it may be that, um, the selling, the luring, the targeting, all that kind of talk, robotic talk, robots, robots in the jungle, as Kevin and I have <laughs> before. Um, it doesn't resonate with you because you're coming from yourself. You're not coming from a book. You're not coming from a program. You're not coming from um, a course you took in school. Your your what you're doing, whatever those things are, is a, a byproduct of you. And so you're very sensitive to how that's going to connect with people, hit people, whatever it is, um, because you're carrying you in all the things. So for me, there's lots of things I did once and I don't do anymore. And probably some things I do now that I won't do in the future, but I'm carrying me through all of them. And because of that, people who have connected with me along the way, they may be like, oh, this is a new thing that Jenna's doing, but it's Jenna. So I'm, I'm with her, not the thing that she's sharing. Does that make sense? <laughs> that, well, I just, I want to restate yeah. what I think I heard you just say. I was trying to write it down and listen to you at the same time. It's not about the things I'm doing. It's about how I'm feeling about what I'm doing. And sometimes you don't feel it anymore. Yeah. And that, and that's okay. That that's, that's growth. That's, uh, I was just um, laughing with my oldest son this morning about this. Uh, we were listening to a rock band we like and how their music has evolved as they've gone and they don't sound the same as they did on their first record and every time they release new music you get the knuckle draggers you've changed man yeah. i'm like yeah like would you say that to somebody of like you know <laughs> I, I remember i liked you better when you couldn't walk or talk you've changed like yeah. Sorry, I'm I'm making it uh, scaling it on the ridiculous, but I don't. Yeah. This is one of the reasons why I don't resonate with just with one lane, because mm -hmm. we do evolve, and sometimes you feel really energetically locked into something yeah. that pulls you off the road on your way back from the Lambeth license office and into some country house that turns into the hive, and then sometimes you feel like this work is 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 done for now, that and now I'm being pulled over here. Yeah. Um, so back to my original question that I asked a little while ago about the ups and downs, that one of the, the new challenges, it sounds like, was when you decided to take on the next building, the bigger house, the bigger expense. Mm -hmm. And for you to step forward as the face of it more, that sounds like it was a, a big challenge at the time. Yeah, absolutely. Because my my uh, career background, which sounds weird to say, I don't have one. I don't really have I, I didn't, <laughs> didn't really work. So there was so many skills that I was short on that I didn't realize until we had an operation that was so big. And so I remember, you know, I had an assistant who was helping me at the time and she had said to me, you know, it'd be really helpful if you, <laughs> if you shared the information that you had about these things. And I thought, 
that's so brilliant. <laughs> like, that's really smart. And she's like, yeah, like, that's what a boss does. Like, they, they pass on it. And I just was like, huh, because up until then, I'd always, I'd always done everything on my own. And so I had no skills to communicate information to other people that could help mm -hmm. So that was hard because in the beginning, you feel like you're you're going full speed. You're trying to get things going. You feel like you don't have time to tell anyone anything. It's easier to just do it yourself. But I couldn't do it myself anymore. And I think the hive has been like it's been like a mother. It's it's been like it's been a gift for me because I have grown so much through it in ways that I don't know where I could have got that experience and. Um, what I love about it is it allows me to experiment with things, right? Experiment with different people on different projects, experiment with my own um, interests. Uh, so yeah, I'd say the challenges in the beginning were, okay, if this doesn't work month to month, I'm in trouble. Whereas before it was like, we could go a couple months, but we're not doing so hot. But this was kind of like, this, this, this has to work. And I think for me at that time, anytime actually where I feel the pressure of that, it takes out some of that fun, right? Like, like the the hat. Like I have to put my energy into this to make it work. Versus, I can't help but wake up every morning excited to do this. Some of that was lost in me in the beginning because it demanded so much energy and attention and new skills. Um, but I have like I have been so lucky with the people who have come through those doors. I honestly cannot even believe that one property has has attracted the best people in our city. It's it's remarkable. It, there's no way this would be where it is without the people who have come there. It's it's not me. It's 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 all of us. And I think, you know, anyone in my life who came from maybe a traditional background of business, you know, uh, even people who have been landlords cuz if you if you make it basic, I'm a landlord. Right? <laughs> I rent space to people to do their things. Um, people are like, "Why would you do that? That's so risky. Like what if someone doesn't pay you and what if someone ruins something or what if and I was like, "I I'm just going to trust that that's not going to happen." And I've been so lucky over the years. Mm -hmm. There's never been something like that. And we've had so here's here's the emotional challenge of something like the hive. It's not meant to keep people forever. And so it's almost like a launching pad to grow to where you maybe need something bigger. And not for everybody. Some people are there, are there they're, they're part of our woodwork and our fixtures. Um, and we'll never, we'll never let them go. Um, but I've, I've had to say goodbye a lot. And that's been really emotionally hard to say goodbye and knowing that the right thing for those people is to move on, knowing it's not personal. Um, because you become a family. We're like roommates. We spend all day together every day. We, we share kitchens, we share, you know, child stories. We share, we share broken down cars. We share celebrations. Uh, we share, you know, challenging moments with our businesses. Uh, it's really, um, it is, it is a bit of an incubator. We live together. And, and so when someone leaves, it's like a member of your family's gone. And that's over all the other things. That's probably the hardest part. Isn't that part of the journey and the adventure of life? Absolutely. Too? Just letting go. I mean, it's just, it's, if you try to hold on to everything forever, it'll just, it'll weigh you down. I'm not saying that that should make it easier, but it, yeah. it I think lends to the um, sincerity and genuineness. Can you see me trying not to say authenticity <laughs> <laughs> of the, uh, um, of, of the process um, it's it's neat how those places back to the the lightning bolt that you described. Mm -hmm. I, I hope people that come across this conversation that will will really consider that. Uh, I, I wonder how how much of that there is f for any of us available for any of us, Jenna, that we may not even realize because we're we've we've got ourselves so programmed to think that we we know to some extent, how we should expect things are supposed to go. And then we get those mm -hmm. lightning bolts. We don't even necessarily recognize them or, or give them space. But when you talked about the respect for the space and just the way that it feels, and I mean, I've been there, I've, I've experienced it. And um, I feel the same way about uh, the London Music Club where we do Mo Mondays and you've experienced that. And when we started it, that, that, that was, I remember telling Michelle Nure, I'm not doing it unless I can go to the venue that I want. <laughs> Just not doing it. 
Yeah. And people come and they're very kind and they'll say, oh, you need a bigger, you're going to need a bigger place. I'm like, no, you don't, you don't get it. This is a character in the play. Mm-hmm. Um, and it does have a feel, doesn't it? The same is, is true for the hive. Yeah. And there's an energy there and it adds to the people and their, their projects and whatever they're sharing and those people and their energy and their creative spirits adds back into the environment. And it just keeps seeing now we're into this cross pollination of the hive again, but it's, it's real. It's palpable, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like, there's no words for it. It's a feeling, it's a feeling you get and it's something that you can watch. And I think it's been so beautiful because now, you know, it's been six years to see people who have come uh, maybe for counseling at some point, And then they were inspired through that counseling or through a workshop to become, you know, to take school for something. And then now they're actually using our space um, to help people in the way that they were helped there. And I think that uh, what I've always wanted the hive to be is just a place to learn, to grow, to explore, um, to feel as though, you know, if there's somewhere, if there's nowhere else that you feel you can be yourself, you can be yourself there. Um, And it's been difficult because when you're dealing with community, you aren't, um, exclusive. You, a community is inclusive. It's inclusive and it's not competitive. So, um, you know, there's been other communities that have started, uh, have tried to start out there and, and they have a competitive uh, nature to them. And there's some that don't. And I absolutely love them. And we are different businesses, but we have the same mission. And I think when it comes to community, if, if you're looking to build one, you really have to shed that we're better. There's, there's, a community doesn't have a better or not better. It's people. It's made up of the people. So you have well, to. Wait be- a Haven't you heard the marketing how tos? You've tried the rest. <laughs> why are you? Why not try the best? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I again, I'm interrupting, but I just anybody watching or listening, did you hear what Jenna just said? <laughs> a community is inclusive, not competitive. And I don't mean to sound all hairy fairy Birkenstocks in the cloud. But if you are yourself and you do your thing your way in in whatever way that is for you to to share and to whomever you're uniquely equipped to connect, then you have no competition. (laughs) It doesn't exist. You're just, you know, read the science of getting rich. You're to create (laughs) rather than to compete for what's already been created. And sorry to interrupt your train of thought. It's so important. I think it's so important, Jenna, because we compare ourselves. You've heard me say this. We compare ourselves to perfect, whatever the hell that's supposed to mean, that we make it up in our mind, even though we can't relate to it, what we relate to is real. And then when we see other people like just actually being human and sharing their triumphs, yes, but also challenges and things like what we're talking about here today, overcoming self-doubt, there's this kind of, ah, I like, so I'm not as screwed up as I thought, or, or we both are, but I can relate to that. There's a connection there that builds community. Wouldn't you say? Yeah. And I think, you know, no matter if you're a one lane person or a 12 lane person, um, I think we've talked about this before. You need, you need to connect with who you are. The more that you feel confident and comfortable with yourself, that is going the chain reaction to people coming towards you because they feel like they can too. Right. We we're so much. We think we make decisions in our head, but we don't. <laughs> we make we make decisions in our gut, whether we're conscious of it or not. Right? We know when we walk into a room, people that feel comfortable to be around, people that don't. Right? We get vibes from people, and um, whether we call it that or not. And so, the more that you can be a place for people to be around that feels safe and comfortable, and you know, like some people think I'm I'm really weird, and that's okay because even though they may not resonate with that they also feel like well she's probably not going to judge me because you know she's she's doing all her bizarre stuff and i think that you know the more that we can just be ourselves then then the other stuff will come and and i love that your approach to business or marketing is is really about people just expressing themselves i think it's so funny sometimes um you know someone believes in this what we're talking about but then they make a post on facebook that no one would actually have in a conversation. Um, <laughs> and, it, and it's interesting because we all know now what selling sounds like. We all know. And so I would say, whenever you make a post, ask yourself, is this how you would talk? Or are you trying to sell something, portray something? Um, and if you are, don't do it. We don't need any more of that. We need people to share themselves and we need value. 
right? You should never post anything that, that you don't think is going to be value, valuable to somebody. Just keep it to yourself. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I resonate with that. But if I go down that um, <laughs> avenue, we'll take over the rest of the conversation. Yeah. Um, Along the lines of of challenges, and I'll talk about challenges. I mean, you're ta- you're you're dealing with buildings here. Aside from all of the the idea and the connection and the community stuff that we're discussing, it, it's buildings that, that have <laughs> pipes and toilets and walls, and plumbing and, and electricity. Uh-huh. Uh, and you know, you as you described, you're you know a landlord. I never thought of you like that. It's it's funny. I'm I'm anyway. It's a uh, You know, we've had. We've had the coldest days of the year where the furnace breaks and I'm, you know, dressed like this, throwing wood into an old, like, you know, wood burning oven trying to heat the house. We've had days where fuses blow and we can't figure it out and I have to bring in fans from Home Depot. Like it's, it's, it's such a collection of things. We've had roofs cave in. We've had all the things that have, like, if, if you've lived in a home, you know that there's always a thing. And when you're dealing with homes that are a hundred years old, the things that happen are very new to me. So I've learned a lot about old homes. I would probably never buy one <laughs> um, because there's just some things you can't fix because they're they're so built into that old home. Um, yeah, I mean, those are the things that, so when I think about leaving the hive, it's usually in the winter. <laughs> it's in the winter because it snowed four feet overnight and I'm like, oh, I got to go out there. I got to shovel before my people get there. I got to drop off my kid. I I had a meeting this morning. Now I'm going to be shoveling for three hours as it continues to snow. The furnace isn't working. I got to help my people. So for me, it's, it's a very, um, it's very maternal as well. Like they're my people. Like I, I really protect them. (laughs) I want to make sure that they feel taken care of. Um, and they don't need to know that, but in my, in me, I'm always thinking like, I want to make sure that when they show up to work today, they don't have to think about this stuff. And it's not, they've been so gracious and, and accommodating to me too, because I can't always be there. Right. Um, but yeah, there's all those challenges as well that I never thought of going into it. So, Take me into one of those moments. The roof caves in. Yeah. And yours was the phone that rings. Uh, what do you do? How do you react? How do you respond to something like that? <sighs> or maybe it's more to the point. How do you re- recall <laughs> responding on the first few such calamities that you encountered as a land baron? <laughs> I think I handled it. I think I handled it really good in the beginning. You know, it has a lot to do with all. So because I do all the other things like the hive for me is is um it's a passion project it's not even my income source it's something i the hive is something i do on the side and so sometimes you know the, the furnace will break down on a cold day in a big house with no insulation proper windows um and i will be like well uh fuck <laughs> How, how am I going to be in all the places? Um, because I have something today that was, you know, something that would pay me and I'm going to have to cancel because, you know, there's cold people. <laughs> um, and so normally I think, oh God, like, what am I going to do? But you know what? It's happened so many times that I, I, I don't know. I, I, I almost like rise to the challenge. Like I almost, I remember last year, like putting the wood in the fire and just being really proud, like, <laughs> I can do this. I can do all the things. Like it's gonna be okay. And realizing that, I you know I always have this saying that none of this is real, anyways, right? The things that we worry about are not even real. It's all just a construct of our social lives. And anything that doesn't work out is probably not a big deal. And so I've just sort of embraced it as well. Today I build fires, and because I'm used to doing all the things, and what I mean by that is is being focused in so many different directions, I can just embrace it. I can just be like, this is funny. <laughs> this, is, this is this is funny and uh, I'm gonna make this work and I'm gonna learn a new skill and we'll probably come up with some other approach to avoid this in, this, in the future, right? So they're all, <laughs> they're all opportunities to, uh, to then look at how can I do this differently? And, and you have to, and I feel for me and for any business owner, you have to look at those things as like, how can we do it differently next time? Don't worry about this time. Don't beat yourself up about all the things that cause this to happen. You can't. You, you got to just think, how can we avoid this next time? 
Um, yeah. Let's talk about all of the things. Let's talk about uh, them. <laughs> I, I titled the episode at, uh, after that phrase because it's something that you and I share back and forth so much. Yeah. And I realize I've steered the conversation largely toward the hive, but I hope people will will see and hear that there's so much to explore inside mm -hmm. that one aspect of the story. And it is just one aspect of the story. Um, but what can you tell us about some of the other things like coaching and, and, and other stuff that's, that has yeah. been and is currently a part of your world, the, like the old vaudeville plate spinner. What are some of the, the plates that are still spinning for Jenna? So I think, you know, when I was thinking about all of the things, I, I don't know if this is um, a self-employed thing or an entrepreneurial thing or someone who does a lot of different things, but there's a, there's a large collection of things I do that don't make money and probably never will, that just feed my soul. And those kind of feed into the things I do that do make me money that I don't have to then sell myself on. So for example, uh, the Certified Coaches Federation, I do the training in London. I absolutely love those two days with these people. Um, and that really fuels me and that is a source of income for me. But the people that come to those, I usually will meet through random project ideas like, you know, things that we can do in the community to help people. Um, I do a lot of, of one-off ideas or um, exploration workshops or, or things like that where I'm just meeting really great people who also want to make the world a better place, who would describe themselves as change makers or coaches. Um, and then that kind of funnels into, into the things that pay me. Um, and I think in that way, it also makes me feel authentic. <laughs> <laughs> but it's I'm not I'm not coercing anybody. I'm just finding the people who resonate with the things that I do. Um, and then I, you know, and then we have conversations about like, you know, you'd be incredible as a coach, right? You're really passionate about um there was a woman this morning I was talking to who um is a cancer survivor and she's interested in coaching people who are cancer survivors um and those with chronic health issues. Um that inspires me. I want to be around those people. And um so then that's kind of just a, a natural progression into some of the, the training I do or workshops. Um but it's interesting because I have a lot of things that I'm starting. So one of the things recently I've started to talk about is helping people plan their funeral and thinking about it as, you know, the time of their life celebration. Like here's a celebration to celebrate all the things that you did and were to people. Um, and how would you like that to look, right? Not just music, but maybe you want a goodie bag of your favorite things. Maybe you want to leave letters for people. Maybe you want to have your friend who's a, you know, a dancer, do a special dance, like thinking about how do you want your last big bang to be? And I, and I do think that part of that, as I've been exploring it is because I don't feel comfortable celebrating myself now, but when I die, I'll be okay with that. All right. I won't have to be there. I won't be there in the awkward moments where people are saying nice things about me. I'll be gone and they can say all they want <laughs> and I can say all the things that I've always wanted to say. Um, so doing all the things to me just means when you have that that lightning bolt moment, just explore it. Like I think that the challenge is that people do have those all the time. I think they do. I really do. I think throughout the day, people have these moments where they think, "Oh, what about this?" and "This would be cool," and "I'd love to do this." And so quickly they start to say, "But how would I do that?" or "That wouldn't work." Or they start to look at the how, and that really stops them because. There's a way to everything. Um, and when you start to ask yourself the how, you're limited by what you've already done. And to do something new, you're probably going to have to do something you've never done before. And so I say, if you have one of those moments, just imagine, just get into the what it would feel like to have that actually come to life and start talking about it. Because you'll never know who will come and, and give you the pieces you need for that. And it doesn't have to be as big as a building. It doesn't have to be as big as a coaching practice. It could be, you know, um, having your like healthier lunch options at your kid's school. Like all of the things should really just be um, the, the, the tangible things that come out of the ways in which we want the world to be different because of us. That's kind of how I see it. All my things are, are the way I want the world to be different because I was here. And that might change. <laughs> um, I, 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 I just so completely agree with you and really see it as part of 
you know, the reason I'm here or the work that I'm trying to do, which I still can't define all that succinctly, but called lightning bolt moments, or I'll call them voices or whispers from the universe or whatever it is that um, to just try to start with some awareness of, of even asking if you can distinguish the difference between one of those things that just shows up, it could be mm -hmm. something as simple as a person's name that just all mm -hmm. of a sudden appears in your awareness versus uh, a thought that's conjured from when we sit down and we try to think things through or figure it out. I'm not trying to suggest that that doesn't also have value, yeah. but, but they are different and we get uh, different doors open up to us and different opportunities depending on which ones we listen to and allow and, and give some space for. And I've just only within the last few years really begun to understand the difference and, and allow more space. But even when you can let that lightning bolt, that voice, that thought, that inspiration in, mm -hmm. maybe it's not like this for you, but for me, Jenna, I, I, I'll let it in enough that I'll feel it. It is electric. It, it's a, oh my God, it's almost kind of out of body. Like I can see it. Here we go. We're going to do this, aren't we? But <laughs> then it's not all that long before that pragmatic monkey mind, whatever you want to call it, starts trying to throw arrows at it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, 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 I, I think it's one of the keys to help people really discover what, Back to what you said, it's not about what you're doing, it's about how you're feeling about, about what you're doing. Mm -hmm. To do more of the things that really light you up. And when they light you up, they'll light somebody else up. Not necessarily everybody, but you're not after everybody <laughs> anyway. Does right. that sound, how oh, much does that resonate with your experience? You said it, right? The, the passing on of your light, when you're doing something where you're in your light, it can only it, that's that's how other people feel you and I think um, we're not looking for everybody right just as we don't want every product out there or every person out there to be in our circle people are not not everyone's gonna want us in their circle either and that's okay um, yeah. you're not there for everybody you're there for those who you can help up to wherever the next place is for them um, there was a quote that showed up on someone's page yesterday uh, from Oscar Wilde I wanted to read it so we are not nouns we are verbs. I am not a thing, an actor, a writer. I am a person who does things. I write, I act, and I never know what I'm going to do next. I think you can be imprisoned if you think of yourself as a noun. And I was like, this is such perfect timing for our conversation today because I think our conversation kind of came out of another conversation where I had said to you, you know, like, I would love your help because you're so good at helping people market or um express who they are and what they're about but i'm like but kevin i don't know i don't even know which one i would pick and there's that you know the vision of going to a networking event and people saying what do you do and me being like uh i don't know i don't know yet and it sounds like i'm doing nothing because i don't know how to say i'm an actor i'm a writer but this quote made me think, you know what, I can just describe the things I'm doing. I'm connecting people. I'm, um, you know, looking at ways to support people and their best selves. And I think that feels better because I don't want to be a noun and I don't want to be, I don't want a period after the thing that I'm doing or the thing that I am. I want to be like dot, dot, dot. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 I, I, I totally get that. And we're getting into some, some other level stuff about, who we really are and, and how our spirit endures. And that's maybe another conversation. I know there will be several more between us. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, Jenna, before we wrap up, uh, talking about lightning bolts and following your intuition and all of these kinds of things. That's what, what put me together with you was following something like that for me to, to go and, and get, do a certification. Um, through uh, life and executive coaching that where you were the trainer. Um, and then that's, that was a step in a, in a path that has led to other different varied pursuits of all of the things. Um, but it connected us together. I'm wondering what it's like for you when you see somebody like me, and I'm sure there are many others, um, continue to evolve in their path. Because when I did that certification, I was selling radio ads still, yeah. not to belittle that, but it's not what I was put on the earth to do. It served its purpose for the time I was doing it. And I'm grateful. Um, 
But I will never forget you coming to me after one of the first Mo Mondays London events that we did in London because there's so many people that I know that even my own family that had never seen me on stage. And I'll never forget you looking at me going, Kevin, <laughs> holy shit. Um, and that was a moment that really meant a lot to me because I, I just I felt a lot of pride, um, shared joy, almost ownership's not the word that I'm looking for, but mm. that that you are a part of my path. And as I look to do the dot, dot, dot on my own journey, I take part of you with me. And so does everyone else that each of us connect with and contribute to. What's that like for you when you have moments and, and see things like that? So it's it's evolved because in the beginning, uh, I became a trainer very early in my coaching career, and I felt like I was too big for myself. Like I felt like, who am I to be doing this when I'm still building? And so a lot of the people I trained became more successful than me. And so I had to really keep connected to the reason I was doing it. I, w I wasn't training to be the, the best person that everyone looked up to. I was genuinely training because I want to help – like I feel like part of my purpose is to is to help change makers do the change that they want to do. I can't do all of the things, but somehow being a coach trainer allows me to feel like I'm a part of all these amazing people that are going to change this world and change the lives of others. And so I've really learned to be okay with um, it's not about my personal brand success. It's about how can I, through my experience and knowledge and, and care, uh, support these people to level up to where they can make their biggest impact. And so when I see someone like you doing something like <laughs> Mondays, and I, I I never even thought about my role in that until this moment when you just said that. I never thought about that. Um, so thank you. And also, I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know how to process that. Um, but I think, you know, when I do see even at a level of people who were afraid to make a video or afraid to do a public talk and afraid to run a workshop, when that does happen it does feel a little bit like um you know when you're a parent and you and you've been you've been encouraging your kid to try out for something or you can do this just trust and believe in yourself uh when they do that it, it feels like a bit of a release like now we'll never have the same relationship again because you're amazing without the need of that for me um and it feels like i'm doing my job and i don't like that word but I'm doing my gift. If my gift is to help people uh, who are going to change this world be in the position to do it, then I feel like <sighs> another one. Like I just, I feel like I'm doing my thing right. And I, I have had times where I've struggled in my own life, even in the past year, where I just felt like, do I do anything? Do I add any value? Like, have I reached my peak? Like, is this the end for me? <laughs> right? And it's and it's funny because I, I've actually felt that way yesterday a little bit. And my partner was like, are you kidding me? You have like 12 new ideas a day. How could you ever think you're out? And I said, you know, I don't know. Just in this moment, I worry because I think for people who do all the things, <laughs> there's a part of us that also admires the person who can pick one lane and just drive it hard, right? Like there's something that just yeah. so comforting and stable and secure about picking a thing and just doing that thing. And I, I really admire that in people. And I don't think that we should be either one way. I think when it all comes down to it, are you happy? Are you waking up excited to do the one thing or the all things? Um, because none of this is real and life is, is short and uh, we're all here to, to see what kind of impact we can make. Is this all a simulation? It's you're sounding like Elon Musk now. <laughs> yeah. I think so. That's we don't know. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> That's the fun of it all. It's, um, I feel very humbled, Jenna, when uh, somebody like you offers this kind of time to me in an effort to try to encourage and, and, and support somebody else. And ultimately, that's what, what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. Or at least it's what I'm trying to do. Um, I found that, you know, money you can, you can make. But once you invest your time, you can't ever get that back. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it does matter. All these things that you'll hear about if you really start going down that path of personal growth and personal development. And there's a lot of the, you know, the guru stuff that doesn't really resonate with me anymore. But there's a lot of it that's been very, very helpful to me and continues to be. And one of them is that 
that when you start following those lightning bolts, as we've called them, or allowing them more into your life, it is amazing the people that come across your path. Mm -hmm. it, it really is. And the whole looking at you being the average of the five closest people around you, and that can seem a little bit harsh, but yeah, I've done it. <laughs> I've you know, and continue to do it, and it continues to evolve. But when I, I look around and I see people like Jenna Goodhand that I can create and collaborate with, uh, I just feel extraordinary, extraordinarily grateful. I really do, and <laughs> and it matter it matters to me uh, for you to be proud um, and to have your approval. Um, and I think that's the power of if we can just drop this surface level bullshit and get down to connecting as actual human beings and doing whatever we're meant to do. We'll find the people that we're supposed to be working with mm -hmm. and everybody else we can, we can wish well. Um, but it does matter. You matter. Uh, the lives that the hive has touched that will continue to touch uh, that you've coached. Uh, and, and all of the other things, please just keep it up. I agree with Jeff. You, I don't think you've peaked. <laughs> uh, I don't think you've peaked at all. Uh, and even if you have the ride down the other side of the mountain, you'll just pick up more and more speed. Uh, but thank you for being exactly who you are and for, uh, for offering me and, and, and anybody that watches or listens this time today, we're, uh, we're better for it. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. So that's uh, Jenna Goodhand. You can find her at The Hive London, uh, Facebook, the interwebs, all of those other kinds of places. You can find Jenna on LinkedIn as well. And I hope that you will, will look her up and connect with her if you haven't already. You certainly will be glad that you did. I want to say uh, thank you again to Trickett Financial, uh, at Carol Trickett at uh, trickettfinancial.com for making it possible for us to uh, do this podcast. Also, thank you to Mo Mondays London, which came up a couple of times. And we're going to get Jenna on that stage uh, at some point before long to tell the story about one of the things, <laughs> maybe not necessarily all of the things. Uh, but I hope you'll join us for an upcoming event. MoMondays.com slash London is where you can find more information. Our next podcast episode, as a matter of fact, I'm going to show you his face in just a couple moments. Brett Luchet from Provincial Glass and Mirror. Uh, they have supported this podcast as well, and I'm just truly grateful for that. If, if, if you've heard of Brett, you already know what a, an incredible force he is in the community, uh, what a kind heart, and what a wonderful business person. ProvincialGlass.com is where you can find out more about Brett and his team. Laura at Diamond and Gold Treasures, DiamondsGold.com. Have a look for her on Facebook as well, because what she's doing there to grow her business I really admire. She's pushing herself out of her comfort zone. Excuse me, comfort zone, like Jenna and I talked about, um, to just try to connect and show other people who she is and why what she does matters. Uh, I, I really admire it, and I hope that you'll you'll consider Laura's business uh, if you're considering jewelry anytime in the near or uh, not so near future. And Gord Fancher at Connect One Consulting, ConnectOneConsulting.com for building more connections to grow yourself, to grow your business. Um, Gord is a, just a terrific person that I highly recommend that you could connect with one-on-one -on -one or uh, bring into your business or both. I mentioned this guy just a moment ago, Brett Lucier. He is going to be our guest just as we chatted with Jenna here. Uh, I'll be chatting with Brett. I've got to, I'm calling it working your way up. Now I'm, I'm feeling like I missed a Jefferson's reference. I could have called it moving on up <laughs> to the east side. There's an 80s or late 70s TV reference for you. Uh, but Brett, a wonderful guy. We're going to hear his story, and I really look forward to that, and I hope that you'll uh, will join us for that. It'll be live uh, September 13th. I'm going to say 2019, which is tomorrow while I'm recording it, but you know, you might be coming across this at some time in the future, in, in which case you missed the live recording. It was five years ago. Sorry you missed it, but uh, it's in the archive, so <laughs> no worries, mate. And uh, just a reminder, you can find uh, all the archived episodes of Journeys with the No Schedule Man and a whole bunch of other good stuff at noscheduleman.com. My email sign-up is there. Information about my online community, the Turtle Tribe, is there. Uh, blogs, videos, other things related to Kevin Bolmer. So how could it uh, be anything but wonderful, right? Grow. I've worked hard on it, though. I think there is some helpful information up there. NoScheduleman.com. I am Kevin Bulmer. I want to thank you so much for watching and listening. 
and thank Jenna Goodhand for joining us as well. I hope that you'll connect with her and to visit her or uh, an event or both at the Hive London. I know that you'll be uh, absolutely glad you did. I hope you'll uh, continue to join us. No schedule man podcast.com is where you can find all the archived episodes. Just remember you won't find your, your treasure by following somebody else's map. Thanks so much for watching and listening. We'll see you next time.